What is cash flow in real estate? It's a term that you might have heard before, probably often, but you might have been a little too afraid to ask, right? I understand. It's like everybody knows but you. Well, it's good that you do want to know and you're finally trying to figure it out because cash flow done right can absolutely change your life for the better. And I'll let you in on what you do specifically need to know. You ready? Let's go. I'm gonna go over what cash flow is, how to calculate it, and then what there is to do to grow it in a way that you can copy this and create it for yourself. So first, what is cash flow? Well, it's the amount of income that a property produces after all of the expenses are taken out. What you're left over with, that's the cash flow. But what is cash flow in real estate specifically? And this is really important because positive cash flow should be the goal of any long-term real estate investment that you make. Positive cash flow in real estate is when the investor receives more out of the property than what they have to put into the property to maintain it. So if you were to receive $1,000 a month from your property, then you have to take out $400 for expenses. That could be your taxes, your insurance, your maintenance, stuff like that. Then you have another $400, which might represent the monthly payment that you make on the mortgage. And what you're left with is $200. That's your cash flow. But keep in mind, this is a really simple, quick and dirty math equation, just to illustrate the example. But there is a little bit more to it when it comes to real life. So let's take a look at how to actually calculate the cash flow. So first, you're gonna determine the gross monthly income from the property. Then you're going to subtract the expenses. Then you're gonna subtract the debt. That's gonna leave you with the cash flow. The gross total income of a property is all the income that a property generates before any expenses or debt service is deducted. Some properties, like a single family property, will only have one source of income, the rent. But certain properties, especially commercial properties, will have additional streams of income, like laundry facilities, or pet fees, or late fees, or storage fees, or appliance rentals. All of those create a property's gross income. Expenses relating to a property will vary greatly as well, but you're gonna to wanna to take all of those expenses to be able to duck that from all of the income to produce a real cash flow number. Typical expenses would include your vacancy rate, property taxes, insurance, management, maintenance, licenses, advertising, and other miscellaneous fees. Subtracting the expenses from the gross income is gonna give you what we call the net operating income, or NOI. NOI does not include the debt service. That's any payments you might be making to the mortgage company or the financing on the property or any preferred payments, say, to your private investors. If there is debt service, this is going to be subtracted after the expenses of which gives you the actual cash flow. Our cash after debt service is what we refer to it as. So let's look at an example of real numbers. We'll imagine we've got a nice fourplex, fully occupied with coin-op laundries on site and paid parking spaces. So we'll say the gross income is $5,000. Excuse me, that would be the rental income. We're gonna get $350 a month for the laundry, and then we'll get another $150 for the parking spaces, giving us a gross income of $5,475. Now we're gonna go ahead and subtract the expenses. We'll start with the vacancy rate, which will calculate as 5%. This is the amount of time that a property is expected to be vacant, 5% of what you're going to collect. Actually, you know, probably more accurately is going to be 10%. So that's gonna result in $500 that we're going to subtract. A little messy, but you get the idea. Then we have property insurance. So that could be about $200 a month. And then we have property taxes, which for this property I believe is $247 a month. And then maintenance and repairs. This is a little bit of a projection. We'll put 10% for that as well. So that's another $500. And then we have property management, which will be another 10%. And then we got trash and sewer. That'll be $350 a month. So our total expenses are $2,297. So that's going to give us a net operating income of $3,178. Then we've got to subtract the debt service, minus $18.55, and that gives us a net monthly cash flow of 
or we multiply that by 12, and that gives us an annual cash flow, $15,875. Now, before I show you the methods for increasing your cash flow even further, if your wheels are starting to turn a little bit and you're getting some really good ideas, let me know by clicking the subscribe button because I post cool videos like this each and every week and you don't want to miss it. Click the subscribe button so you can make more money in your real estate. Now we're going to go over how to add your cash flow to make this number even bigger. And you can make this bigger by amenity upgrades. You can do it by remodeling. You can do it by furnishing the property or you can add pet rent. This is one of my favorite ways to add cash flow to a property and it's really easy and it's barely noticeable by the actual tenant. And that's if they've got a pet that they wanna bring, we charge them a pet deposit as we always would, but we also charge them an additional monthly rent for that pet. Right now we're charging $50 a pet. And just by accepting pets, it opens up your buyer pool, it creates, creates more competition and it typically can create a higher rent than you would normally get not counting that pet rent. You can also add an extra storage facility or storage facilities to a property. If you've got some land there building little storage sheds, you can charge for that. That's a great way to produce extra cash flow for your property. Another thing people don't think about, how about a telephone tower on the roof? You can really do this easily with commercial properties or billboards on top of the roof. You can charge for that too. And then of course, there's raising rents of which for a while, landlords have kind of shied away from because they didn't want to raise the rent too much to potentially turn off their tenant and maybe lose a good tenant. But now, over the last few years, with the demand increasing so rapidly and not enough housing out there, you should be able to increase your rents fairly easily without much resistance. Also, to increase your cash flow, look at decreasing expenses. Where can you make cuts right here? because by decreasing your expenses, you're also increasing your cash flow number. So now, how much cash flow should you earn? What is a good cash flow number? What should you shoot for? Well, the short answer is as much as possible. But every real estate investor, every property is gonna present different opportunities. So what is a good number? Some may be happy with a 7% return. In the grand scheme of things, in our traditional investments, that's pretty darn good. Others seek 10% plus. There really is no correct answer that applies universally. A really good place to start for you is to take a look at what your current investments are already doing. How much return are you getting for the money that you already have deployed? What we do is we'll take that top number, your highest performing asset, and then our next investment property will try to improve or increase on top of that. If that is always your goal, then you are always increasing the performance of your portfolio. So if you'd like some help in finding some income properties, some cash flowing properties that are already fixed up, they've already got a tenant in place, there's already property management in place, and if you need the financing, that can be arranged as well, it might make sense for you to hop on the phone with Mercedes. Go ahead and download her free investor packet over at cashflowsavvy.com. And after you download that, you'll have the opportunity to pick a time to hop on the phone with her and brainstorm some ideas about what cash flow would look like in your world. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.